Hey guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because... Damn it, Janet, that hurt my finger. Ow, not again! Oh my God, what is wrong? It's a Monday, it's a Monday, I can't flip this damn fan! I've gotta get it just once. The reason I can't do it, I know that people are like, my haters are already writing. He's making excuses for why he can't flip his fan now. It's because it's a little windy, and every time I flip my fan, it like blows towards me. Okay, we're gonna get it this time, ready? The album, Dad, Shimmy, Shimmy, AF, the Christmas edition. <laughs> Rock on gold dust. I didn't even say when it was available. It's never coming out. <laughs> I just broke like a thousand hearts. It's never coming out. What do you mean? It's, it's never coming out, okay? <laughs> or maybe it is. Or maybe it is. I don't know. The album. Dad. Shimmy, shimmy. AF. <clears throat> the Christmas edition. Rock on gold dust woman. How are you guys doing today? Happy Monday. You having a good day? You can see how my day is going. Not very well. <laughs> if I might say so myself, <laughs> it's shaking bacon. I helped. Um, so we have some things to talk about. We have some things to talk about. I gotta get ready first. I gotta get all lubed up. And by lubed up, I mean I, I gotta put on my, my, my treat marshmallow cream uh, lip balm. <laughs> Number two, not by Morphe. And then I have to uh, go in with my uh, lip gloss. And then I will be ready for today. Because um, I do, you know, I, I did say that in going into 2024, I was going to uh, try not to address a lot of the negativity because I spent a lot of time in 2023, as I think we all know, addressing a lot of negativity. Um, and so, like on a serious note, no, like in all seriousness, I, I kind of made a goal of going into 2024 that I wasn't going to address a lot of negativity over here and things like that. I was just going to not pay a lot of mind. I was going to, you know, focus on the positive, focus on all of you out there that love watching my videos every single day, which I'm so appreciative of, as you guys know. Um, and so I was like, I'm just, I'm not going to focus on the negative, right? Um, but then some things happened this weekend. And so I feel like... I need to address some things and actually I made a statement well I wrote down a statement so let me read you the statement that I have because it's it's kind of a serious statement it's I took some time writing this all out I wanted to make sure that I had it exactly how we wanted it to be said um, I don't want there to be any confusion going forward so I may or may not also um, well let me just get, let me get into the statement before I get into what I may or might may not have have done right before I do this video because um, I want to stay focused. Okay, like this is this is hard. So I wrote the statement out last night, and it said, okay, first of all, um, like I, I'm not really that happy with how some of you have been acting out there um, for months now. Many, many, many of you. Okay have begged me to watch these ridiculous reality TV shows for my reality TV channel, like 90 Day Fiance, Life After Lockup, and Love After Lockup. Many of you even begged me to watch Dancing with the Stars, and I did. I did. I watched one episode of it with the ridiculous costumes and dancing, and I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't. But you asked me to. And I did it for you, because everything that I do on my channels is for you. Um... Then a few people suggested recently that I should watch Fool Me Once on Netflix. I think people know by now that I love a good cozy mystery. Um, I love mysteries. I love thrillers. Um, I've read them for years and years and years. And so people, a few people here and there recommended me to watch Fool Me Once, which is a, based on a Harlan Coben novel. In fact, Netflix has an entire collection of Harlan Coben um, movies that they've adapted from his books on Netflix, and I think there's a few on Amazon as well. I was reluctant to do this because so many of you, many of you for years have asked me to do Real Housewife coverage with my husband or with my good Judy Tanya Jean, and I take that very, very seriously because I want to please the people that are watching my videos. And so I made this new channel, 
and um, started watching every reality TV show that you guys asked me to watch. Just recently, I've um, been asked to watch uh, uh, Farmer Finds His Wife and, and Fucks Her, and um, somebody else asked me to watch I, 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 th these ridiculous shows that you guys, you know, Temptation Island 422, um, and, and I watched them for you, you know, but there were a few people out there that were asking me to watch Fool Me Once, and so I thought, you know, I, I try to make people happy, so I'm going to watch this Fool Me Once. <clears throat> I finally watched it this weekend. And I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm hooked. I'm hooked on the Harlan Coben novels, okay? And right after I got done watching that last night, I turned around and I had already asked my good Judy Tony Jean that's watched all of them, okay? I said... Which one is your next favorite? She goes, well, Fool Me Once isn't even my favorite. And I said, well, which one's your favorite? And she said, Safe. So I turned around last night for you, okay? And, and I, I watched, you know, eight episodes of Safe and finished it late last night, which is, I'm very tired today, okay? I'm very tired. But I do this for you. I do this for you, you know? And so um, I have to say that um, going forward... This is no longer a drama channel. This is no longer a candle review company channel. This is forever now and always will be because there's so many adaptations of Harlan Co Coben novels. This will be a Harlan Coble novel to movie adaptation only on Netflix and Amazon Prime review channel. I hope you're happy. I hope you are, okay? <laughs> And unlike uh, Jacqueline Hill and Manny MUA that like to make jokes about non-disclosed sponsorships and then non-disclosed, and unlike Miss Toddy Westbrook of whose video this was going to be about today, but I'm just too lazy to watch her video about the worst week of her entire life, so that video will be coming tomorrow. This is not sponsored by Harlan Coben and his uh, novels adapted into movies only for Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime, but if it were... If it were sponsored by Harlan Coben, I would disclose appropriately, just so y'all know. Okay, so, uh, my, see, it gets nice outside and you start giving me hell. Yak, 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 yak. Guess who I'm talking about today? You've missed me being out here. I have missed you being out here. Oh, now she's coming over here to have a conversation with me. <laughs> I was just getting out of the street because there's a fast car coming. Fast car. Bye. Who do you think I'm talking about today? Colleen Berenger. Colleen Berenger. Well, no, not today, but maybe tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to do a little guest visit so I can ask you what you think about old Colleen Berenger, okay? Yeah, I, I hope Colleen is well. You hope Colleen's well? Well, you might stand alone in that. Have a nice walk. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, yeah, so this weekend... For all of those of you out there that fell for that uh, that statement, <laughs> for all the haters out there, um, I did watch Fool Me Once this week. It's so funny because I talked about it in my vlog last night, and a lot of people were like, oh my god, I loved it. But then there were a lot of people that were like, I couldn't get past the second episode. You always, in any show, you have to get past the second episode, okay? But anyway, even though I sometimes can't get past, I tried to watch that louder milk. I couldn't get even past the first episode of that. But anyway, but no, in true story, I watched Fool Me Once, and like the first 20 minutes, I was like, the acting is so bad. This is so horrible. How am I going to ever watch it? And then, if y'all know what I'm talking about, it, I'm not ruining it for you. It comes out real early in the show, okay? This picture frame comes out, and the whole story changed for me. And I watched all that. I was obsessed. And I was like, oh my God, you're telling me there's like 10 of these series out there? And so then I'm like looking through them. I'm like Googling like which Harlan Coben's Netflix series are rated the best. There's whole articles where they are rated best to worst. Y'all Google this. I love the Google. I mean, when I was growing up, we had the Encyclopedia Britannica, okay? We didn't have the Google and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I love the Google. So I'm like Googling like, what's the best one to watch? And so on all the lists, Safe came up best. And my good Judy Tony Jean, she told me that Safe came up best. And it was funny because I said that in my vlog and somebody said, oh, I watched that Safe. I didn't think it was very good at all. I loved it. Oh my God, I was up till 6.30 in the morning watching that Safe by Harlan Coben. Not sponsored by Harlan Coben, just in case you didn't know. But anyway, I was so excited about that. Now, to get back to what I said that I may or may not, what I, I stopped myself because see, it was funny and I was trying to be real serious, okay? I'm a method actor. You have to understand that I'm a method actor, okay? So anyway, uh, at that part where I was going in to read my statement, and that was when you didn't know this, okay? Because you didn't see the receipts on the other side, but I had accidentally, instead of my notes, here are my notes that I read, but instead of my notes, 
I had pulled up my iTunes, okay? And what I was going to say was, because I wanted to say this at the beginning of my video, I may or may not have, in preparing for this video, been dancing around the living room with Boo Radley on my toes. <laughs> Flipping fans, getting ready. I couldn't even flip a fan this video to begin with. There it goes. That was an easy flip, though. But anyway, flipping fans and dancing hoo, 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 to uh, The Boss by Diana, Diana Ross, the 12-inch mix. <laughs> On and off. You guys know that part? Oh, my God, I love that song. They used to play that at every Pride Day back in the world. Oh, my God, I love that so much. I love that. The Boss by Diana Ross is, like, one of my favorite songs of life. So, anyway, what am I talking about today? I don't really know. No, really, I'm going to talk about all the drama that I'm going to talk about this week. <laughs> Because I put up an Instagram story and I asked y'all, what did you want me to talk about this week? And so, I was like, well, I'll just read through these things. I did this the other day in my video. But at that point, it had only been up for like an hour. So, I was like, well, I'll just like read through these things and give you guys my like uh, quick two seconds opinion. By the way, did y'all hear? I'll give you my quick two second opinion on it. And then I'm going to tell you which videos I'm going to make for this week. And then you guys can also, in the comment section, you can ask me what you want me to talk about. You know, like you guys ask me to talk about stuff like you'll be like, can you, can you um, do a deep dive into uh, the, the Dark Passenger channel and all the things? I'm like, who is the Dark Passenger channel, okay? I thought Dark Passenger was Stassi Schroeder when she drank too much on Vanderpump Rules. Who's the Dark Passenger channel? I get the most weirdly requests for videos. Y'all know what you, you, you know what I do over here? I cover like five or six people. Okay, let's just make this very, very clear, okay? Just so y'all know, so you know when you, you come over here and you're like, can you please do a deep dive? First of all, let's just make one thing very, very clear, okay? Have you ever seen me do a deep dive ever? <laughs> On this channel, on any channel, I have seven channels, okay? On any of those channels, have you ever seen me do a deep dive? Have I ever claimed to be a journalist? I love when people are like, he's a trained journalist, the fuck I am. No, ma'am, uh-uh, not at all. I started with a camera in my living room. I'm a dude with a camera, okay? I have never claimed to be no journalist. I have never claimed to be none of that, okay? Don't care to be Andy Cohen. Don't care to be none of them people. Do y'all hear, I, Wendy Williams, I was gonna say, but did you hear there's a documentary coming out about Wendy Williams? Oh my God, my good Judy Tiny Chin, she came out. I feel like I am just like, who is calling me right now? Oh, somebody just texted me. Anyway, I feel like I am just like sitting on my front porch talking to one of my neighbors. You're like one of my neighbors. You having fun? Do you like living next to me? Don't report me to the HOA board, okay? I promise I'll clean up my walkway early this year. But anyway, what was I saying? I don't even remember what I was saying now. Uh, I was feel like, saying like I was feeling like I was just talking to my, one of my neighbors or something like that. But I feel like I was talking about something else. Now I don't remember what I was talking about. Candy Burris. Oh, that was what I was going to say was, did y'all hear that Candy Burris is, she's, Quitting. Well, she's going on pause, apparently. Dorinda Medley was put on pause, okay? But she's going on pause. So, anyway, people ask me all the time. They're like, can you do these deep dive investigators? Like, no, like, seriously. Like, I'll get, like, real nice messages from people, right? And they're like, I really respect your, you know, reporting and your investigations. I'm like... <laughs> You must have me confused with somebody else, okay? I'm a shit-talking drama channel with a fan and some lip gloss, okay? I am doing no... I don't know why anybody's coming over here for anything serious. No, seriously, I, I don't understand it, okay? Like, every once in a while, I might sit in that chair, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning and pop a Diet Coke, and we might talk about Colleen Berenger, okay? Or Jimmy Charles or something like that. But listen, most days, we, it ain't about all that over here, okay? It got, it got a little, like, you know, serious towards the end of last... What? Okay, so, you know, it had to get, like, real serious towards the end of last year. And when things get serious, I'll talk about it. But when people ask me, they're like, can you do, like, a deep dive? And, and here, they send me 400 receipts or something. I'm like, I don't, don't even be, don't waste your time sending me those receipts if you think it's somebody. I cover five people, okay? I cover Jeffree Star. Here, let's just do the drama opera of 2016, okay? Jeff, me, 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 me. I feel so comfortable filming this video today. No, like, truly, I do. <laughs> I do. I feel like I'm just talking to my good genies out here. It's so much fun. I'm having so much fun today. How are you? Oh my god. I think tonight I'm going to watch the one that's on Amazon Prime called Shelter because that's the one that everybody told me to watch. See, I'm back in the Harlan Coben world. Okay, I was in Vanderpump Rules. I was living at Sir every night, but now I'm in the Harlan Coben novels. Okay. So anyway, and uh, my, my husband and I this weekend, what did we watch? We watched, I think I talked about this in my vlog yesterday, but we watched A Haunting in Venice. Fantastic. The Agatha Christie movie. And then we watched... Uh, after that, we watched the first two episodes of Truman Capote versus the Swans, the new Ryan Murphy movie. Oh! Have you seen the costuming? Um, oh my god, it is gorgeous. Apparently, my husband like wrote this whole article about it. They didn't actually do like use like actual costumes. They used vintage pieces. So like every piece that you see in that show, okay, like all the designer pieces, the Dior, the Valentino, all that kind of stuff, the Oscar de la Renta, it's all like vintage. Those are all Oscar, or, like the Chanel pieces are all like vintage actual pieces. 
They talk about Bill Blass in there. Did you know Bill Blass was from Indiana? That's where I'm from. People are like, nobody comes, nobody in the world is from Indiana. <laughs> Babyface. Y'all don't know Babyface. Babyface is from Indiana, okay? Ryan Murphy is actually from Indiana. John Green of the, the Vlog Brothers, which I used to call the Vlog Brothers back in the day. Um, hey, how are you? I was watching um, this video that the Vlog Brothers, he did. People come to me all the time and they say that I do uh, clickbait titles. Let me read you this clickbait title that John Green did. Yeah. By the way, when people want to ask me, like they say, what's like the rudest YouTuber that you've ever met or not met? Hands down, the rudest person that I've ever met or not met was John Green. Literally unapproachable. I've met him like five times in Indianapolis and like, you know, come up to him and said things like that. R rude. Very, very rude. Um, and like, hey, how are you? <clears throat> it's so nice today. I get to see all my people while I'm out here filming and stuff. Nice. <laughs> are you having vegetarian chili for dinner tonight? No. Well, what are you having for dinner? He's having uh, pot pie. Pot pie. Yeah, and I have all well, shrimp and rice. It's a bunch of stuff from Trader Joe's. Shrimp and rice? Well, it's a little thing. I thought you were a vegetarian. I, I do the fish. Oh, you're a pescatarian then. I gotcha. Yeah. Enjoy your walk. It's beautiful out here. So, John Green did this video on the Vlogbrothers uh, five days, six days ago called How the Vlog Brothers Will End. And it's like five minutes long. It's boring. And all these people, I was kind of actually surprised when I went to their channel. I was like, <coughs> Hank and John Green have been around forever, okay? Forever. And I was like, they only have 3.7 million subscribers. Like, they started, uh, what's that, that California thing, that TanaCon vlog? Uh, vlog con? <laughs> it's not called that. YouTube con. Bravo con. That's what I want to go to. What was that thing? Why can't I think of what it was called back in the day? Y'all are shouting at the camera right now. Stop. Like, God, it's Monday, okay? Y'all are shouting at me. Whatever that con is, okay? VidCon, VidCon. So they started all that back in the day and stuff like that. But, you know, he did this video called uh, uh, How the Vlog Brothers Will End. And it's basically like, well, we probably will end up one day, but maybe it'll be with death, and I don't know. Don't ever come for me on a clickbait title again when John Green of the Vlog Brothers is doing a clickbait title and people are calling him out about it. They're, like, jokingly calling him out about it. Oh, my God, you scared me. I almost had a heart. Don't ever call me, okay? If I want if every video that I want to make over here has a clickbait title, if John Green can do it, I can too, okay? He wrote fucking Fault with the Stars. Don't fuck with me, okay? I already owe about a dollar to the customer, and I don't care today. It is Monday, okay? It is a slow day in sun. So anyway, so because this is what happens when I say it's a slow day in sun, I just kind of made that up. But Saturday is the night of sin, and right? Sunday is the, the day of redemption because you go to church, okay? You pray for your sins that you did on Saturday night, and then Monday you just got to take a rest. Tuesday you get back to sin and again, see? That's how it all works, right? So anyway, now to talk about the, the John Green thing, I adore John Green's writing, okay? The only book of his that I do not like is Turtles All the Way Down or whatever that book was called. I didn't dislike it. I just, it wasn't as good as the other ones, but I've loved all of his books. I've loved his writing. I have like gone up to this man, I don't know, four or five times and not like, oh my God, I'm a fan or that kind of stuff, right? Like, although I did do a video on my booktube channel and calling fangirling or fanboying over John Green or whatever. But very respectfully, we were like at an event and I went up to him and I tried to talk to him. He was not having it. And this was like, don't, it's not about like, oh, he knows who you are. This was long before he ever, I was ever on the YouTube. Well, one was during that and all this kind of stuff. I even did a whole video on my booktube channel where I drove around to all the places that are in The Fault in Our Stars and like showed it and all this kind of stuff because I was like, so I love that book so much. Sat out here and read it on my front porch and cried my eyes out, you know? But listen, so when people think that there's like, the people People that, I will tell you this, the people that you think will be the rudest to you are the people that are actually the nicest to you. I, that's what I have found in life, right? But other than that, it's funny because I always, like, people always ask me on Q&A's, like, who's the rudest YouTuber that you ever met? And I'm like, I can't really... Uh, like, think of any rude YouTubers. Like, every person I've ever met or collabed with in person, like, at that time, now, my opinion might have changed about them since, right? But at that time, were just absolutely amazing to me, okay? But John Green, I saw him, he was, like, walking through Broderpool, which is this artsy area of town, okay? And I know he gets his hair cut there, because I saw him coming out of where he gets his hair cut, and I was, like, walking through Broderpool, and we, like, passed each other, like, in this parking lot. And I was like, oh, hey, it's like, I said, you're John Green, right? Like, I love your books. He just kept on walking. Could not be bothered, right? Saw him in a grocery store like ran literally ran right into him and I was like oh my god John Green he like just like kept on walking saw him at an opening of a hotel it was an event I was there with my husband I was like so nervous I was like oh my god there's John Green that writer that I love and Alex is like go up and say hi to him he would love 
love that. So I went up, he was like with a couple people and stuff like that, and I stood by him. And then finally, like, a couple people went by, and it was just he and his wife. And I went up to him, and I was like, hey, like I said, I just wanted to, like, you know, meet you. I've, like, read all your books. I love your work and things like that. He literally, like, turned and walked away. I've never met anybody as rude as that in my entire life. I think I actually did a video about it called Don't Meet Your Heroes or something like that. Because I was so put off by that, you know? I just, like, I... I, I, and I Honestly, past YouTube, I met quite a few celebrities, and they're never rude like that. I don't care how big a stars they are. Actually, sometimes the bigger they are. I was like, okay, so we watched, uh, my husband and I watched Watch What Happens Live all the time with Andy, uh, Andy Cohen, and, um, and so, uh, we were watching it one night, and uh, Julia uh, Roberts was on there, you know? And I love Julia Roberts. And he was asking her all these questions, and she was so classy. Like, he was asking her, like, questions from the, you know, that people had sent in, like, what's your favorite movie? And she wouldn't even answer that question, because she's like, I don't want to ruin it for the people that watch my movies, because if I say what my favorite is, that might ruin it for somebody else. She was very nice. She actually did an entire sketch with Andy Cohen, and she played Sutton Strack, and she was like, name him. Name it. It was hilarious. Go look it up on YouTube. I'm sure it's there somewhere. So anyway, John Green, get your face off my screen. Rude. Rude. Anyway, he always acts like, oh yeah, like a bunch of nice guys. Pfft, blow it out your ass. So anyway, now that'll be the next video. Computer Mon dissing John Green. It's the truth. I don't know what to tell you, okay? Should have been nicer. I gave you five chances, okay? Don't know what to tell you, okay? Was it stalking you? Wasn't being weird? Was very nice every single time, okay? And uh, five times. It was like five times, okay? There was another time that I think that we were like at another event. And I like went up to him and I was like, and he, I was with somebody that time and he like literally like turned and walked away. I was like, I, do I stink? People always tell me I smell so good because my cologne was so fierce. But anyway, not fierce. I don't wear that. No, but uh, from, is that from Abercrombie? I don't wear that. I never did like that cologne back in the day. But anyway, my husband, he did. I didn't like that cologne back in the day. That was kind of a little bit like, you know, after me and all that kind of stuff. But no, I always really smell good. Great, Aventus. Or Chanel Blue. But anyway, or uh, Meteor uh, by Louis Vuitton. Those are my top three faves. So, what was I going to do today? I was talking about Candy Burris. Candy Burris is leaving Real Housewives of um, Atlanta. You know what? I was going to make a whole video about this on my Peterisms channel, and I probably still will. Somebody left it, and I love when people try to, like, leave a nasty comment, but they leave it kind of, like, sugar-cutted, you know? And this person put, love, slow down when you're talking, okay? And I was like, vroom. Like, do you ever feel like when somebody says something to you, it, like, you go, like, this through this time warp, you know? And it takes you all the way back to, like, the very first time that somebody told you that, which for me was, like, in kindergarten or first grade, when I had a teacher that said to me, Peter, you need to slow down. I literally, in my entire life, had so many people that have told me, slow down, you need to slow down talking. I can't understand what you're saying, blah, 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 whatever, okay? It's literally, if you are a fast talker, you will understand like me. It is literally, uh, you, I don't really know how to do it. I do not know how, that sounds so slow to me. I don't know how to slow myself down. When somebody tells you something like that, okay, change this one fundamental thing about you that you literally cannot change about yourself. Like when people used to come over here and they say, you sound like a 16-year-old girl. Fuck it, I do. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> OMG, gag me with a spin. Grody, I don't know what to say, you know? Like, okay, I sound like a 16-year-old girl. Probably because I hung around all 16-year-old girls when I was in high school. Probably because I was raised around mostly women, you know? That's probably why I sound like that. I don't know. But when you tell somebody to change something about themselves that they can't change, I think that is so fucking rude. And by the way, to the person out there that said, love, slow down when you're talking. You know what? Let me tell you something, okay? This is my fucking channel, and I'm gonna talk as fast as I want to, and you know what? To all those teachers out there that gave me shit through the years about talking so much, listen to you, okay? I got a YouTube channel, and I can talk as fast as I want to. Trisha Paytas got on some show for talking fast, okay? Proving to everybody how fast she talked about it. If I wanna talk fast, I can talk fast. I can probably talk faster than Trisha Paytas can. It's shaking back, and I help. So anyway, here we are at the 23 minute mark, and I haven't even got into what I was gonna talk about in this video today, because you know what? I got friends of mine, they're like, Peter, how do you make these long ass videos? Like, I, I don't even have stuff to do for filler to talk about for three or four minutes. I go, filler? <laughs> It ain't filler, baby. That's my video. The intro is my video, okay? If you have not figured that out by now, okay, doesn't nobody care about Tony Westbrook. That's what I was saying. The five people I talk about over here, okay? Or ten people. I talk about oh, the drama opera. See, I like keep on forgetting what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay. Jeffree Star, Jacqueline Hill, Manny Mue, Nikki Tutorials, James Charles. Hi, sisters. Laura Lee. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Remember when she used to say that? Not about I do that no more. <laughs> Nikki Tutorials. I already said that. Raw Beauty Christie. 
I added her. I, you know what? That was psychic. Do you guys remember when I added her back in the day? Because I used to say Patrick Starr and all this other kind of stuff, right? And then at the end, I was like, oh, I should add Rob Beauty Christie because I love Rob Beauty Christie so much. For all of you out there that are like, you've always hated Rob. No, I didn't always hate Rob Beauty Christie. I didn't, okay? But anyway, she got a few videos coming. <laughs> She does, so you can just strap yourselves in, okay, and put your depends on. And I, listen, I ain't apologizing to the depends community today. I'm just not, okay? And I'm not even, people asking me that I need to apologize to the Moose community for Moosegate 2024. Do you all realize what I went through? That was from, that was on me. If anybody should be fucking apologizing, it should be the moose and the deer and the elk and the caribou and whatever fucking community they they belong to. They should be apologizing to me. They should be apologizing to me. I was the one that suffered at the hands of Moose Gay. It will never be the same. I don't know what this video is, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> so I put up on Instagram the other day. That was like five or six people I talked about. So they'll be coming over here and asking me to talk about all these people that I don't know about, okay? You know, like, I have gotten so many requests for me to talk about Ruby Frankie and the, the eight passenger thing. Okay, first of all, that is so serious of a topic for me. Like, let's, no, in all seriousness, like, let's break the fourth wall or whatever we call it or whatever. That's when you, you know, that's when you're on a show and you turn and talk to the audience. But anyway, okay, let's just like break for a second. I want to talk about something serious, right? If I'm going to talk about a serious situation on this channel, out of respect for the topic, I want to make sure that I know what I'm talking about, okay? I have not followed that case that closely. Therefore, I will not be making an eight-passenger Ruby Frankie video, okay? I don't know that much about it. I would have to watch a lot of videos, do a lot of research on it, so that I did not give a negligent response. I'm not going to come out and just do some video on something that I don't know nothing about, okay? Trust me, all right? It wasn't even that deep, what I said about Rosanna Pancino, and that completely bit me in the ass, okay? You know, it was like everybody came for like one thing that I said in that video, and everybody forgot that Rosanna Pancino, up until it was convenient for her, had supported Colleen Berenger, okay? And yes, I did say Berenger, because that's what I'm going to refer to her from now on, because my neighbor, I love her, and she says Berenger. So anyway, so listen, okay, I hadn't done a lot of research into Rosanna Pancino, and I even said that on my video. I think I read her Wikipedia page. I didn't know who she was. I care less she made some cupcakes, you know? So anyway, and, and you know what? I, I, I wish the best to Rosanna Pancino. I do, okay? But I ain't coming out and doing a bunch of videos about stuff that I don't know anything about anymore, you know? People have been asking me to make these videos about this, make videos about... I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not making those videos, okay? I'm making videos about people that I know about. Now, there's other people other than the five or ten that I have followed through the years that I know stuff about and things like that, right? So, we can make those videos if you want to. But I went on to Instagram. Hold on a second. And um, I got them all screenshot here. And, uh, well, hold on a second. Actually, what we'll just do is we'll go in here into my Instagram. And we'll go to the questions where they were. Here they are. Okay. So, you can see I... Hold on a second. I put this post up, okay? It says, drama topics you want me to cover. Go. And then at the very end, you can put activity down here, see? And then it comes up with all your questions. And here's all the questions that I got. So let's just read through these questions and see what y'all want me to talk about. And this will be the week in drama for Peter Mon. Maybe I should do this every week. And then whatever topics come up, I'll cover those too. But then whatever you guys want me to cover, I'll cover those things, okay? The key, this is where, like, I don't even want to say it on video because it makes me sound completely ignorant. But, like, somebody put on here, uh, they just, they said something like, this is a good example. Like, they asked me to cover something that I have absolutely no idea what they are talking about. Like, I, I know nothing about it, okay? Y'all, I don't watch the news. I don't. I don't. I watch, uh, Instagram. Sometimes Twitter, but it gets me real depressed. No, it really does. And, um, I watch Harlan Coben shows. <laughs> Vanderpump Rules, reality TV, that's where I get my news, okay? If it don't happen there, I don't really know that. No, that's not true. I'm more educated than that. But a lot of things, I don't really know what they are, you know? Okay, somebody asked me, will Shane and Rylan become family vloggers? Thoughts, thoughts on family vlogs? Well, I think y'all know how I feel about family vloggers, first of all. Um, I think that, well, okay, I think it has a lot to do, honestly, with how they do it. I think if they exorbitantly use their kids to get views and things like that. Like, I've seen a few family vloggers that, like, their channels are not completely centered around their kids, right? Like, their channels are 
a lot about like the couple and you know planning things and planning this and whatever and like trips and like the kids will be in parts of it or whatever but that's not like ultimately what it's all about like I understand that to some degree but when your channel is literally about like everything to do with kids like no I think that you are using your kids for views and clicks without their consent because they're not old enough to understand and I take huge issue with that you know um and do I think that Shane and Rylan will turn into that this is gonna stop hold on just a second you know, I actually, I saw that Rylan posted a video on Rylan's vlogs. If it happens, it'll be on Rylan's vlogs. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. If it happens, it'll happen on Rylan's vlogs, not on Shane's channel. Um, but I saw that Rylan had posted, oh, I want to get out of this and I'm not going to be able to get back in. Rylan had posted this video and I think it was called, like, our first month with twins or something like that. Hold on a second, I just saw that he posted this. Day in the life with newborn twins and it's sitting at... Um, 617,000 views. Um, the last video was called Our Nursery Makeover. That's 538,000 views. The video before that was called Our First Month as Parents. The month before that was the birth of our sons. It went, um, and then the day uh, we found out, that was about having kids. It's happening. Our, fi our, famous, our final baby update. Our Extreme House Makeover. Now, one of the things I think that is, is interesting to note is that when you go to Ryan's vlogs and you look, the children's, not by much though, I will say, he actually gets pretty good views on his vlogs. The children's vlogs get do a lot better. I think that there are probably a certain amount of people out there that are watching or waiting for them to screw up. I'm just going to actually um, kind of like scroll through this um, while I'm sitting here talking to you because I just want to kind of see if they show their kids a whole lot in there. What I think they're going to do, and like I said, I haven't really watched any of these videos. What I think they'll probably do is like, because I've noticed on Instagram, like they'll show themselves like after the kids are asleep. They're like sitting there doing this like, uh, that visual thing with those glasses and whatever. I think they'll like reference it. They'll show things, but I don't think that they'll have the kids a lot in it or they'll wait until they're a couple years old. Like here, like Ryland's pushing the kids or they're pushing the kids down the street. They're saying they're talking. They're showing stuff in the room. They're not really showing the kids. They're showing them pushing the kids. They're showing stuff about the kids. Um, but like, no, the kids are not in a much, a much of it. And this is kind of how I thought that they would handle it, in all honesty, is I thought that they would um, really like kind of reference things to do with being parents, but like not really showing the kids. I actually should go in here and, um, look at their other video, the video before that and see, but I have a feeling it's probably very, very similar. Our nursery makeover, they wouldn't have shown the kids that. Our first month as parents, um, let's see. No, they're, again, they're just showing a bunch of stuff. They're showing, like, stuff they bought, whatever. There's, like, hardly, the, the second one was when they showed the kids, like, with, Shane and Rylan like pushing them down in like a stroller. Here's the next one, which is the birth of our sons. They show some pictures of the kids and stuff like that, but you know what, to be honest with you, and this is where like this, this opinion might receive a lot of uh, controversy or whatever, but I'm gonna stick to it. I think that like to have a video where you're showing, you know, like the birth of your kids or to show that or whatever, like I think that's pretty normal. I'm talking about when you are overusing your kids in videos specifically for clicks and views, okay? I'm not talking about showing a nursery that you bought or, or talking with your partner about what it's like to be a parent. That's a completely different story, you know? And this is how I kind of thought they would handle it. I really think that Shane is to the point where he doesn't really care, okay? I think it's Rylan that's probably putting the pause on it and being like, no, we're not going to show a bunch of that kind of stuff. These are our kids. We're going to protect them and things like that, right? So um, I will be, I have to tell you, my uh, the psychic prediction... <laughs> of the world, which is basically just my gut opinion, is that they will not show a lot of the kids, okay? They will show, like, a, a, maybe, like, them in the stroller, like, as they push them, or, like, in the background, like, they're, like, like, maybe feeding them or something like that. Or what they'll do is they'll show it with, like, Shane feeding them, but they won't show the kids. They'll do stuff like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of laws that are coming out right now that are saying that kids can be in a certain percentage of a video before you have to start, like, saving money for them, and then you have to basically pay them, that you don't get the money for that, right? Um, which Colleen Berenger is breaking left and right with her, uh, kids in her, every single one of her videos. Do I think Colleen Berenger wants to be a family a vlogging channel? Yeah, she is a family vlogging channel at this point, right? It's so interesting to me that Colleen Berenger has her children on the exact same channel where she sat down in her high video and, I mean, let's just, can we just talk about the weirdness of this for a second? That Colleen Ballinger in her 
on her same channel where she is blatantly showing her children and all of this with her channel is the same. She chose this, okay? She should, she could have posted that on a bit. She could have posted it on Miranda Singh's channel. She could have posted it on her Colleen channel. She chose to post on her Colleen Vlogs channel, the same channel, okay? Where she posts all of the footage of her kids, she posted the same video addressing the allegations of predatory behavior. Okay, I think that is such a like weird take on that 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 didn't even go to her head that that would be like on the same thing. And let's just put this in perspective for people out there that want to say, "Well, you come so hard for this person, you come so hard for that one." People would not let Trisha Paytas go back in the day when she came out and she started doing the Moses hack or the the Paytas Hackman family channel. And she and I talked about it on my channel too. So do not say that I do not call out that girl, okay? I called her out back for it back in the day. I went there and I looked for the videos. People were saying they were there. Then I couldn't find the videos because she had deleted the videos. But when Trisha Paytas started that the Paytas Hackman channel, Pacman, Miss Pacman channel, originally she had a lot of videos on there of Jason Nash, videos that she had done with Jason Nash. And people were calling Trisha Paytas out, okay? This was before her daughter was ever born, that they were calling her out and saying that she was had videos on there with her and Jason Nash on the same channel that she had that was a family vlogging channel for her and Moses going into them having their daughter, right? But y'all don't think it's kind of a little weird that Colleen Ballinger on the very same channel that she explicitly shows her children, okay, for a family vlogging channel, which she has been criticized for years, long before these allegations ever came out. Colleen was greatly criticized, okay, for the fact that she was using her kids in family vlogs, okay? People were saying that to, about her left and right long before she the allegations ever came out, right? Hey, how are you? Good. So the fact that on that same channel, she has addressed this, or not addressed it, but indirectly talked about the allegations, not in one video, not in two videos, not in three videos, but several videos, okay? On the same channel that she has come out and she is showing her kids left and right and how proud she is to be a mother, she is victim blaming other people's children, okay? That are very, very young and, and were very, very young at the time that these allegations have occurred and never addressed it. On that same channel, okay? This is where to me it's so interesting that YouTube has not stepped in okay and I'm not saying that they shouldn't I'm not saying that they shouldn't I have a personal opinion about that but you know I, it is what it is but it's interesting to me because you know when Shane Dawson's channel was demonetized people were like well that makes sense that Shane Dawson's channel was demonetized because a lot of his problematic behavior had was on YouTube okay from videos from the past well, James Charles' channel was demonetized as well, and this is where, like, I pull a, like, I'm starting to talk about a video, and, like, something comes out of the blue, and then I'm, like, I'm an hour into it. I'm, like, how did I even, I didn't even know I was going to be talking about Shane Dawson. I hadn't even looked through most of those questions, you know? I think the other day somebody said that about that. But anyway, so I didn't know if this was going to turn into a Shane Dawson, Colleen Barringer video and all that kind of stuff. But anyway... You know, they demonetized James Charles' channel. And a lot of people were like, well, that's good. They should de uh, demonetize James Charles' channel. But why? But why did they demonetize James Charles' channel? Okay, with Shane Dawson's, it made sense. Because a lot of his problematic behavior that he was being called out for in his supposed cancellation, which I don't believe was a cancellation, that was had occurred on YouTube. Had occurred on the videos that were still posted on his channel that he started deleting with quickness, Right. And, and rightfully so, you should have deleted those videos. They shouldn't, have, they shouldn't have been up there anymore, you know? But, okay, so they, they demonetized Shane Dawson's channel. I get that, right? But why James Charles? Everything that James Charles did was off school campus. I mean, but really it was, right? It was like when you get in trouble, you know, like off school campus and then you get in trouble for it at school, right? So like James Charles was held accountable. Well, James Charles was held accountable because the entire world was asking that James Charles be held accountable, okay? There are other people that have been demonetized on YouTube for very similar situations, but none of James Charles' problematic behavior occurred on YouTube, which means that YouTube does choose to stick to step in at certain times that they feel that somebody is being problematic with their platform. Now, Shane Dawson and James Charles, they both gave them back their monetization, right? But needless to say, both of their channels were demonetized, okay? Why have they not demonetized Colleen Ballinger's channel? She, she had 
further deeper allegations. Well, I mean, James Charles came out and admitted to his allegations, and maybe that was why, and Colleen Ballinger never has. That could be why, because he came out in a video and admitted to it, and maybe that's why he took it down and then they demonetized it. That could be why, okay? But the fact that she's never come out and admitted to it, maybe that's why they have never demonetized her channel, right? But she addressed it in her high video with the ukulele. She talked about it indirectly. She wrote it in song lyrics. Everybody knows what she's talking about. Don't act like YouTube's that stupid. Okay, unless they're reading through the fine lines of all of it. So, does, does she have an in at YouTube? People are saying that she's got a lot of people at, at YouTube, okay? Well, you, you might want to use those people to help your views, Colleen, because they are not good these days. I haven't actually looked at Colleen's channel in a while. Just as I was going into these damn videos, my tripod fell. Okay. Uh... I bought tons of e.l.f. makeup three days ago, 54,000 views. The kids make dinner pizza from scratch with her kids in the thumbnail, 69,000 views. Mommy Sunday, uh, four days ago, 57,000 views. Shocked at the Lions versus 49ers championship game. It's her and her husband, they're hugging. Oh, she's trying to act like she's Taylor Swift with Travis Kelsey. I get it. Because she's been riding the, tra the, the Taylor Swift train lately. Okay, cutting my hair again, 86,000 views. Girl, you might want to leave that hair alone. You got enough money. I think you can go to a, a professional hairstylist. <laughs> you might want to leave that hair alone, girl. I'm just saying, okay? Just a, just a unsolicited piece of advice, okay? Exploring beach caves. Ooh, 55,000 views. Giving my husband the best gift ever. <laughs> What? Group chats, girl. Okay, 89,000 views. I keep failing, 78,000 views. Not feeling great. This is her thumbnail. 90,000 views. That's her most viewed video, not feeling great, okay? I mean, she is not even breaking 100,000 views. The last video that broke 100,000 views was three weeks ago, my big audition. And look, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the only video that I have watched in here. And I watched that just to get a thumbnail. And that was where she was talking about because my spill some tea with or spill some tea with me on Instagram had already like talked about what she talked about. That was where she blamed basically the incident, but she wouldn't say which incident that cost her the Broadway show. Okay, girl, listen. Ariana Maddox is in, in Chicago. We don't need you, okay? I'm just saying right now, we don't need you. <laughs> Ain't nobody asking for Colleen Barringer up on Broadway, okay? <laughs> I don't know. What, it, what is it, girl? Are you doing, like, the Broadway version of Barney? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't know about all that. My husband just, like, pulled into the driveway. He is home so early. Why is my home so, so... Let me stop this, and I will be right back in two and two. Okay, I'm back. I had to talk to my husband for a second. I was like, why are you home so early? And he said, I just texted you because I told you I was coming home early. I didn't even read the text. Let's see. He said, just got done with work on my way home. <laughs> well, I guess if I read the text, I would have known that. So anyway, um, okay, what I was talking about, Colleen Ballinger or piss ass videos. Yeah, I mean, the last video that I covered or talked about her was where she was talking about the Broadway thing. So I think it's so weird that she's addressing all of this on her... I mean, it is a family vlogging channel. Let's just be for real. She puts her kids in the thumbnail. She, her kids are in a lot of videos. They're running and screaming around in the background, all this kind of stuff. She's doing crafts with them and all this kind of stuff, right? And so I think it's I think it's weird. I think, you know, I've said this for a while. I think that 2024 is going to be the year where they're going to really step in and and be hard on family vlogging channels, you know? But I'm just like, I'm just curious to wonder if you guys are interested in the fact that Colleen Ballinger was never demon. I mean, really, demonetization or the taking down of somebody's channel is really the only thing that YouTube can do. They were never going to take down James Charles' channel. They were never going to take down Shane Dawson's channel, okay? But they did demonetize them, you know? And I think it's interesting that they demonetize those channels, but they didn't demonetize Colleen Ballinger. And as I'm seeing her thinking about it, like... Shane Dawson came out and he addressed the things in his past, right? And then didn't film for a while. And then when he came back, his videos were demonetized and his old videos were demonetized. James Charles came out in a video and he um, admitted to what had happened and the allegations and apologized to the victims, right? There is so much madness going on in this neighborhood. You have no idea right now. People are walking by. My neighbor's dog is over here on a leash, like looking at me and things like that. There is so much going on. This video is not wanting to be made today. Oh my God, the gods of Shane. Jane Dawson and Colleen Barringer have spoken. They do not want me talking about this today, which means I'll probably have to make this video again tomorrow and talk more about it. But anyway, let me get some lip gloss while I'm going into all that. So, um, you know, I think it's interesting. And I'm wondering if there is something, I, I've never seen anything about this before. Have people talked about this? 
Have other people talked about this and I missed it? That the reason that calling a Behringer has never, like, I cannot not call her that now, has never been demonetized by YouTube is because she never got in a video and admitted to the things that she did. Because if she did, then they would have to, like, put some kind of thing in there. Is that, is that why she's not, she has, she's unwilling to do it? Maybe it's not about the fact that she's afraid of getting sued because she knew she was never going to get sued. Maybe it's not about the fact that she was worried about Trisha Paytas because she was never worried about Trisha Paytas, you know? Who knows? Maybe Colleen Ballinger, ultimately, her biggest fear was that if she came out and addressed it, maybe this is why she got the attorney, was because if she came out and addressed it, she got the best of the best. I mean, this is, when you think about this, like in retrospect, right? That, I mean, the best of the best that really didn't do his best. But he, like, his, his, Th main thing is people that have allegations of sexual misconduct, right? So, Colleen ba Ballinger, she hires this attorney to protect her or defend her because he's not a criminal prosecutor or criminal attorney. So, a criminal prosecutor. <laughs> he's not a criminal attorney, so he wasn't going to file any charges. So, he was a defense attorney, which means he was going to defend her against what? Against what? I'm having to believe now that the reason that Colleen Ballinger never spoke out about it was really just to save her face with YouTube. And that was why she got the, the attorney to watch very closely what she said. Because if she didn't, then YouTube could take action. If she admitted fault in any way whatsoever, maybe this was never about the victims. Maybe this was never about Trisha Paytas. Maybe this was never about her being, you know, so worried that she was going to be sued. Maybe this was, she was worried about long term. She knew she'd come back from this. She knew she'd come back from the allegations. So many other people had. James Charles had a thriving career. Shane Dawson has a thriving career. Other people with those same allegations have a thriving career. She knew she'd come back from it. But the one thing that she couldn't yet lose was YouTube. Because without YouTube, she wouldn't have anything. Did I just solve a Harlan Coben novel? No, seriously, did I? Have other people talked about this? Because I haven't seen this. Is that the reason why she never came out and talked about it? Because if she addressed it, then YouTube would have to take action. And the reason that YouTube, people are probably like, Peter, a million people have already said this in videos. Well, if they have, I haven't seen it. Is that why she never came out and talked about it? Was because if she came out and talked about it, then YouTube would have to take action. And the possible action they could take with the allegations, the evidence that was out there. You know, James Charles, there was very limited evidence. With Colleen Ballinger, there was a lot of evidence. If she came out in a video on YouTube and said, yes, I did these things, and there was factual evidence, YouTube could have got sued for that too, possibly. You know? So I'm wondering if that's why they do take action at certain points and other t points they don't. I mean, those are not like little decisions they make on a, you know, a Friday afternoon before they go off on the weekend. Those are heavy decisions they make, especially when it comes to somebody of that size that's going to get that kind of news coverage. Google and YouTube do not want to look bad in a situation like that. I have to believe that that is why they never dealt with Colleen Ballinger the, the same way that they did with Shane Dawson and James Charles. I have to believe that. I, I have to. Um... Wow, I never really thought of it from that point of view before. Well, with that being said, I'm kind of blown away. People are like, Peter, that video's been out for three, uh, two years, it has? I didn't know, oh my God. Anyway, um, if that's true, that actually shows really how deceptive, she, on a much deeper level than I ever really thought that she was. And the fact that she comes out and she says that she's never made her... I mean, this is another thing, right? Is that, like, she says, like, sh I never made my videos. My vi videos were age-restricted or they were not made... Because there's a thing you can put that says not made for kids. Every one of my channels has it on there. And she said, my videos were never made for kids. I don't know why people thought that Miranda Singh's videos were made for kids. Who are family vlogging channels for? Do you think... I mean, I'm sure kids are watching other kids on... That's for moms. I get that, right? But you have kids in your videos. Those are family channels, right? For families to watch together. So you came out and you said that I was never making those videos for kids or whatever, but then you turn around and you have your kids in your own videos. It's like she's really, to be honest with you, it's like she's really trying to fuck with YouTube. It's like she's really like, YouTube, you can't get me because I know how to play this game. It's almost kind of like she got reprimanded by YouTube and that's why she's throwing up her kids even so much more. I'm wondering what the real story is behind the scenes, and I'm wondering if the reason why she didn't get the attorney to begin with was not why we all thought, but it wasn't to deal with YouTube so that she could keep her channel all along. I mean, speculatively, allegedly, I don't know. But she didn't keep that attorney very long, you know?
She kept him until she came back, and then he was gone. He wasn't her attorney anymore. So was it that YouTube was like, we've got to deal with you? And she was like, you're not going to deal with me? And she hired that attorney to deal with YouTube? Is that what his sole purpose was all this time? Have other people talked about this? Did I just solve a true crime mystery? I, listen, I've said it for years. I got a true crime book club. Don't fuck with me. Don't. Anyway, woo! Okay, I'll cover the rest of this stuff in my video tomorrow. I love you guys so much. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.